channel and tonight I'm going to be doing a VR request for our fellow community member the card closet he has asked us to do a VR request on um, our earliest baseball cards or at least our first baseball cards uh, so I wanted to kind of give you a rundown of some of the cards that I picked up when I was a kid um, I can't say for certainty which cards were my first ones, but I do have a stack that I can deliver for y'all. And in honor of such uh, the packs here, I'm going to get into why that's there. Um, but the first card I want to show you is the Tom Seaver 1969 Tops. And so this one is really, I mean, you can clearly see this one is very much off center. It's kind of showing another card on the printing. And this is what was really fascinating at the time and still... Uh, Kind of encounters these encounters are like led all the way into the 80s where you know the manufacturing and the quality control was was not what it was to what it is today and so you'd have stuff like this where it's printed and then it's cut horribly and i don't know who the next player was after siever i don't know if it's um his number is 480 i don't know who 481 is i'll have to look it up um but nevertheless uh this card i received i must have gotten at a card show in the 90s uh with my dad and um it's funny because i had no idea where this card went i you know after uh, many years of not collecting uh i came back to my mom's house and found that i had a crate full of cards and this wasn't in there and i kind of forgot that i, I didn't even have it uh in there i didn't even record the put two and two together but uh it turned out that i gave this to my sister Many, many, many years ago, because she was a you know she was a loyal Mets fan as well, and so my sister kind of just found this miraculously one day and gave it back to me, uh, or asked me if I wanted it. And I said, "Yeah, sure, I'll take it." I mean, if you don't want it, um, and so it has like a special meaning. This one, I mean, the condition is really poor, but I mean, given the uh, given the course of time that this has survived, it's very special, and I'm glad it's still around. Uh, it has symbolic meaning to it. And um, I'm glad my sister kept it in pretty good shape over the years. This was not in a top loader either uh, at the time that my sister told me about it. Second card is the 1972 Willie Mays. Um, similar to before, my dad and I used to go to card shows at Westchester County Center in White Plains, New York. Uh, that's where they had the like, I don't know, uh, bi-monthly card shows. Really a lot of fun. I mean, my uh, my mom would tell me, and I, I think I remember, sort of remember this. Uh, I would spend every single day for the th for the three days they had it, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. I would just spend there all day, and I don't know what I really. I mean, I didn't have that much money. You know, like my mom may have given me like twenty bucks or something to buy cards, but you know, this card then. I mean, it was probably I don't know what the price of this was, but. My dad would go one day with me, like on Saturday, and so we'd look around, and I think he must have gotten this for me. Um, so this one also, from the 90s, I got this card. And I don't know how much it cost, but special card. Um, you know, I'm a huge Willie Mays collector, as well as Seaver, so those two players kind of have a, uh, a good place in my heart. Uh, the next card... My dad also is a huge Larry Bird fan. I don't know where I got this. Uh, it definitely, I might have come out of a Sports Illustrated for kids. I might have taken it out because I thought it was really cool. And I was like, oh, that's, you know, I'm a huge Larry Bird fan because my dad's a Larry Bird fan. That's usually how it goes when you're a kid. Uh, you kind of follow your dad's footsteps in, uh, in sports heroes. And so Larry Bird kind of sits there with, and I must have had one of his, like a magazine or the Sports Illustrated for Kids, and I think I ripped this out. That's what I, I think I remember. And this was really cool. I mean, you know, he uh, taught himself to shoot with his left, left hand. That was, that's, apparently there was a game where he shot left handed the entire game. But uh, this is a really cool card. You can't really find these often to, you know, these too often and when they do come up I mean they're few and far between um, so that was really cool uh, the next card another card shop uh, card show purchase I think was the 1987 Fleer Larry Bird uh, love this shot with Kurt Rambis same story uh, the Westchester County Center card shows my dad bought this I couldn't tell you how much 
but he definitely bought this for me because I know it was definitely um, at the time must have been well at the time actually basketball cards weren't really as popular as they are now the vintage stuff so it probably didn't cost that much maybe I don't know five ten dollars I guess maybe I bought it with the twenty dollars that I was given uh, but I can't remember uh, but now obviously these cards cost a lot more basketball cards are far more relevant the vintage stuff people want them uh, the, because I think a lot of it's kind of surrounds around Michael Jordan so anything Michael Jordan related um, his value goes up and the car the other superstars also go up because of that and the, l the last card or the last two I have another one I'm going to show you is the 1987 Donruss Mark McGuire. McGuire was my favorite baseball player uh, in the during the time, like during, I mean, Willie Mays and Seaver were heroes, but McGuire uh, was my childhood, essentially, I, like watching him play. Um, I spent like my 10th birthday or 11th birthday going to Shea Stadium to watch him hit two home runs on his quest to break 70 or to, to hit 70 home runs. You know, at the time, nobody really knew about the steroids, or either they did or they just kind of ignored it. But um, I just remember going to shows and seeing that this 87 Don Russ was really just out of reach. And, you know, I think it was going for like 20, 30, 30 bucks at the time. So I had to be really careful with the $20 I was given because I knew I'd be spending all day at the show. So I don't know, you know, it's like it was one of those cards you really wanted, but I had to wait. Uh, I think I got the, got this one for my birthday. That's that was the, that was the deal. My dad took me to the show, knew I wanted this one for a long time, got this one for me, and I had this in my binder for, you know, sitting dormant for uh, twenty plus years. So very special card. Um, nowadays these cards go for maybe three to five dollars at most. Um, obviously the Olympic card at at the time the Olympic card was going for like two hundred dollars. I remember this. And now the Olympic card is like 10% of that. It's like $25 max. But special card. I love this Maguire card. I love the rated rookies. Donruss 87 has a special place in my heart. Now, the first card that got me back into the hobby back in uh, early 2020 was, uh, I told the story a million times, so I'm going to give you a shortened version of it, is the, I have the, the Tops 81, 82 Larry Bird. I got this one graded. This is the one that I picked up in Balt in uh, Federal Hill, Baltimore, at a bookstore. It was more not so much a bookstore, but more of like a nostalgia shop. Uh, it used to have like Super Nintendos, uh, old CDs, records, um, like uh, action figures. It was just like one of those uh, nostalgia shops, and they happened to have cards, and I found it in there. And the guy said, "I'll take you know twenty five cents per card." And so I kind of figured this had value. And I remember seeing this as a kid. Um, and recently, I mean, these cards have just been going up and up and up in price. So um, special, really special card. I really love this one. This is what got me back into the hobby, seeing this at a shop and um, just reigniting my love for sports cards. Uh, my favorite players, Bird, Mays, Seaver, Maguire. So uh, I just want to finish up in honor of um of this vr request i wanted to open up some packs maybe uh be it'd be incredible if I found like a mcguire in here um so if y'all don't mind if you want to watch um definitely we'll open up the uh open up some of these packs here and see what we can find nothing like opening up some junk wax that was just my childhood man just opening up packs i remember those just so much fun opening up the packs and actually being able to enjoy the gum <laughs> Uh, Mike Marshall, Floyd Bannister, hey, here's John Smoltz, his second year, Hall of Famer, Charlie Hayes, his son, Cabrian Hayes, is killing it in the, uh, right now this year, Mike Sharperson, Jody Reed, Fred Lynn, Milke, here's Jay Howell, Ken Caminetti, I wonder if that's his rook, no, sorry, his was, I guess, 88 or 87, Rob Deere, Bobby Bowe, Terry Kennedy, Randy St. Clair, John Smiley, and Gus Polidor. Put my commons over here. We'll open up the 87 next. See if we can find a McGuire, a Bonds, Bo Jackson. Those are the big names. 
Unfortunately, Maddox did not make it. He was in the 87 tops traded. We got Orla Hershiser, Gene Nelson, Jerry Willard, Danny Gladden, Ken Griffey Sr., John Crook, Buddy Biancalana. Uh, okay, he stuck to Bob Walk, I think, underneath. That's who suffered the gum. Bob Walk, promoto, promotion card, Aguayo and Phelps, Bobby Witt. His son is also playing. Tony La Russa, a young La Russa, Kirk Gibson, Rick Manning, Tony Bernazard, George Frazier, Keith Atherton. Very empty on that pack. Open up the 89, find a Griffey, Randy Johnson rookie card, a um, number of others. Got the Red Sox, Rich Yet, Eric Davis, Kelly Paris. Trevor Wilson, Carlos Quintana, Mark Grace, that might be his rookie. I think it is his rookie. Superstar, and then Robin Yount. Dante Bichette, that might be his rookie card, which I think it is. Eric Bullock, Derek Vicenzo, Luis Salazar, hey, Tony Gwynn, Alejandro Pena, and Ray Hayward. And we'll finish up with the, my favorites. Let's find a Maguire, just, you know, just a... That'd be a great way to end it. Great way to end it. Wouldn't that be? That would be something. And they did come with a puzzle piece. I think that was the Clemente puzzle. Uh, Juan Nieves, Roger Mason, Steve Lumberdozy, Terry Pule, Joel Skinner, Paul Ossenmacher, Donnie Hill, Andre David, Charlie Hudson, Tony Armas. Davis, Jose Guzman, Lance Parrish, Eric Kennedy, Rance Molinix. Mm. Be quiet on that one. Let's find, let's find one here. Jose De Leon, Lee Gwitterman, Dave Dravecki, Pedro Guerrero, Tracy Jones, Steve Sachs, Johnny Ray, Angel Salazar, Jeff Heron. Doug DeCincess, Dave Winfield, Jeff Musselman, Bobby Gritch, Mark Eichhorn, and you got Pete Rose. So no Maguires today other than the one I showed you. But hey, I want to say thank you so much for checking out the video. And um, make sure you check out the card closet for his amazing giveaway that he's doing right now. I'm going to leave a link for his, pro for his profile in the description so y'all can check them out. I'll also leave a little link you can click on to check them out that way too. Uh, but I hope y'all have a great rest of your night and I'll see you soon. Take care.